thanks for coming out. And so a little bit about me. I used to work a lot of retail, but now I'm a ballroom dance instructor. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't get paid as much to cry in the bathroom like I did at Whole Foods. <laughs> That's still pretty cool. Pretty cool job. You know, I get to work with a lot of wedding couples, like, preparing for their first dance, and it's such a fulfilling thing to be a part of, you know? It's made me feel so alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing people in love every day. Every day. I have this one couple specifically that always, like, in between dancing, they, like, hug and kiss each other on the forehead. And I'm like, guys, I know you pay me to teach you how to dance, but I will pay one of you to kiss me on the forehead, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, you know? I have this other couple, too. It was, like, their very first lesson, so I was asking them questions about their wedding. And I was like, oh, like, is it here in Chicago? And they're like, oh, no, it's in Italy. I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Like, do you have family out there? And the bride was like, oh, yeah, my whole family lives out there. I moved here for work, but I stayed for love. <laughs> So I called immigration the other day. <laughs> <laughs> she came in on Thursday and was like, I'm having visa issues. I was like, what? <laughs> what? That's crazy. Your fiance and I will have to dance alone when you're overseas? <laughs> what if you don't come back? <laughs> Forehead kisses for me. That's all I know. All right. Forehead kisses. Remember when forehead kisses used to mean something? <laughs> <laughs> now people are just giving them out. <laughs> you know, I was hooking up with this guy a while ago for the first time. And when we woke up the next morning, he kissed me on the forehead. And I was like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> are we? <laughs> <laughs> in love? <laughs> like, what is going on here? Do you have a toothbrush at my place? It's crazy. I think we need, like, hookup culture etiquette, right? Like, if you aren't serious about someone, no forehead kisses, no hand kisses, no bunny kisses? What? <laughs> if we're rubbing our noses together, you're meeting my parents. <laughs> Okay, if you're intentionally putting your nostrils close to mine, we better be figuring out our Christmas plans. Okay, buddy boy. Oh, that's fun. Dating's fun. You know what I learned while dating? There's a lot of things that men can say to women, but if we said the same thing to men, they'd be offended, right? Like the other day, I had a guy tell me he wishes I was taller. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sounds like someone's projecting. <laughs> Mr. 5-4, are you sure that's... <laughs> if you aren't laughing, you're a short king. Shout out short kings. <laughs> Love you guys. You know, but you can never ask a guy, like, wow, is your hair naturally that thin? <laughs> <laughs> the breeze just catches it, you know? <laughs> so aerodynamic, wow. You can never tell a guy either, like, wow, you have really nice boobs. <laughs> <laughs> he just wouldn't take it well. He wouldn't. Believe me, I've tried. Okay, I've tried. I had a guy tell me I had nice boobs once. I was like, these? <laughs> These? <laughs> These 34 A's? <laughs> you mean my pectorals? <laughs> <laughs> like you're choosing to compliment the most masculine part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> He was really into them, though, okay? He was really into them. He has a boyfriend now. <laughs> but he was all about them, let me tell you. All the time. You know, it's funny, actually. The same guy, one time, he asked me what I would do if a zombie apocalypse happened. And I was like, dude, I don't know. 
I don't know if I'd survive. You know, I'm not the smartest, I'm not the strongest, but I was anorexic for three years. <laughs> so if there's a food shortage, <laughs> my body is trained for this. I can live off of nothing for years. Still run laps around you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's okay to laugh, I eat now, guys. I eat now. <laughs> it's funny though, eating disorders are interesting because once you recover from them, it's basically like you go through puberty all over again. You know, like my sex drive came back, my boobs came back, kind of. We've been over this one. <laughs> the thing I was most excited for though was when my period came back, I was like, thank God. I thought I was pregnant these last three years. <laughs> Got that abortion for nothing, you know? <laughs> All five of them. <laughs> All five of them. Now, on a lighter note, guys, um, like my period has been the past three years. <laughs> um, it's my one year anniversary. Give it up for me, one year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, not since my abortion, no. Um, <laughs> quite the opposite. One year since getting laid. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it takes one year for the earth to rotate around the sun, but I haven't been rotated once in any way, any direction this past year. You know, I think by default I'm a gamer now. <laughs> I think that's how it works. A PlayStation, like, showed up at my apartment yesterday and I knew how to play Call of Duty. It was, really, <laughs> it was really weird. You know, I can't come now unless my gamer headset is on and someone just screaming from the other end that my mom's a whore. <laughs> 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 it's the only way. It's my mom's favorite joke, by the way. It's my mom's <laughs> favorite joke. It's funny though, after going one year without having sex, now whenever I have to sneeze, like I'm on the verge of sneezing, like it's right there, and then the feeling goes away. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it's like to have sex with a man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't even want to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Just here for the build up. I really like the build up. <laughs> a release, not for me. Not for this girl, no thank you. You know, maybe I haven't had a good sex life because I never really got a sex talk. Did any of us get a sex talk in here? Yes? No? Okay, we all sound sad and <laughs> <laughs> like we've had traumatic experiences. <laughs> I get you. No, my parents never gave my sister and I like a formal sex talk. Their version of a sex talk was every Monday night, we get together, put on ABC Family. What? and we'd watch The Secret Life of the American Teenager together. <laughs> now, if you've never seen that show, it's about a 15-year-old girl, she gets pregnant, the show follows her life, and at the end of every episode, my parents would just stop and be like, so, <laughs> any questions? <laughs> any questions? I'm like, no, mom, I think I get it, okay? If I go to band camp, I will have sex. <laughs> I will get pregnant, and I will become the school slut. All right, but the show gives you a loophole. Okay, if you're religious, you can still do butt stuff and not get slut shamed. <laughs> so I've been Catholic for about 10 years now. <laughs> Praise the Lord, thank you. Our Father. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you guys with this question, question for everyone. Um, do you ever feel like you miss someone? But then you masturbate and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Been fun. I'm Ali Soroka. Uh,